one of the things that's sometimes hard to see is the actual esophagus. So um, do you guys see it here? And maybe describe to me what you're seeing. And now someone should have optimized depth on this one, but you know, that's a criticism for later. Do you see the esophagus? So I think someone's kind of going up and down the trachea here, giving us a good like. See it a little bit. So it's kind of just hanging out in behind. Obviously, you know it's behind the trachea, so that should be your first kind of clue. You can kind of see it dancing almost from left to right at times. Probably that is depending on how the person is actually, you know, putting some pressure on the trachea. As a rule, it tends to like popping out to the left more so, like we saw in the last picture. But, you know, it can really show up on either side. So there's no like hard and fast rule about where you're looking for it, other than to say that anatomically it's clearly behind the trachea. Um, and so, so one thing you will notice though is that depending on the pressure you use and sort of how you're putting the pressure on, it can kind of move from side to side. But if you're putting very little pressure on, sometimes it's completely not seen and just sort of sitting behind that, that trachea. Because, you know, in its natural state, the esophagus is a collapsed structure that probably is about the size of the trachea, right? So it can really be kind of uh, obscured when you're not... Uh, when you're not putting a lot of pressure on, or of course there's no tube in there. So, um, you know, if you're not seeing the esophagus, by and large, that's a good thing, right? You, you're more concerned if you're actually seeing something that's that's saying, hey, I'm the esophagus and I have a big tube in me. Um, so what does that actually look like? Well, what do you guys think about this one? Yeah, um, and I looked at, like, I found this video clip on our, on our archives. It wasn't one I personally did, and you wonder, like, what's kind of unusual about this? What's unusual? Yeah. The diameter looks... Yeah, it looks a bit small. Yeah, smaller. So, um... It could be, like, an NG as well. Exactly. <laughs> this could be an NG tube. I don't actually know, because the, the video clip that we have says that it's an esophageal tube. Um, this may well be from like a very, very young infant where you've got like a three or three and a half tube that's in um, and, and it's pretty small, but you know, I could also buy that that's an NG tube potentially. Um, so you can see the two kind of areas right here, right? So you've got number one, which is your trachea, number two, which is your, your tube there. So it, look at the patient, right? Look at the patient. If, if they don't have an NG tube in, that's a tube. <laughs> in, a, in, in ETT, if they do have an NG tube in, then probably that's the NG tube, um, but obviously you have to clinically kind of correlate it with the patient. In an older person, that's a lot easier. So this is this is the uh, something that I pulled off of uh, academic life and emergency medicine of uh, a really nice demonstration of a uh, ETT um, double shadow sign. So uh, in this case, you can kind of see that the the trachea is about the same size or just a bit bigger than the esophageal tube. Um, and, and, you know, clearly if you're seeing this, that should be your, your obvious sign that somebody's got a tube in the wrong place because um, you're not going to get an NG tube that's that large. Um, this is also from that same blog slash sort of academic posting. They call the normal sign of seeing no tube the bullet sign. And I think it's basically because if you draw it out around it like that green line is it kind of looks like a bullet. They also talk about the reverberation artifacts. Again, I'm gonna sort of contend that I've never been totally comfortable with the idea of saying that, you know, because there's a tube in there, there's a specific kind of uh, look of the reverberation artifacts versus when there isn't a tube there. You can certainly notice that when a tube passes through, if you're watching dynamically, that those artifacts will change. And I think we have a clip of that somewhere. But you'll probably appreciate that it's kind of hard to tell exactly what the difference is and that you can be very specific about that. So in general, if you don't see the esophagus, the tube must be in the trachea unless you've done something really, really unusual and pointed it in a direction that, you know, like if it's coming out of their nose, then okay, you know, clearly maybe this isn't that helpful, but you probably should have figured that out at the bedside. Um, so no tube seen in the esophagus is a good sign. The one key caveat I would say is use a little bit of pressure because theoretically, I suppose, the tube could kind of still be shadowing behind that uh, trachea, but as a rule, when the esophagus gets filled, it kind of falls over to the side, so that's probably not going to be the case. So what do you guys think is happening in this clip? You just watch it through a few times and see. <coughs> Okay. 
return to the ego. Yeah. So this is actually a patient who's active. This is a dynamic video of an intubation. And I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. Now this, you can see where we start from the beginning to the end. So the beginning is where you're not intubated, and then the end is where you are intubated. So this is intubated now, and this is not intubated. We are now intubated. You can appreciate that the artifacts change, right? Do I think that they change in a clearly de demonstrable, like, this is always how it looks when you're intubated kind of way? I don't think so. I think, I think there's a lot of uh, um, kind of difficulty in telling that. Like, it would be hard without you seeing that that change occurred for you to appreciate that one is significantly different than the other. Like, definitely from the beginning to the end of the clip, you can see that the trachea looks very different. But I think if you just put the probe on there, you'd have a hard time being absolutely certain that this is a trachea that is intubated versus not intubated. What, what's the, like there is to the left some column over here. That's the, that's, that's, that's exactly. Pitfall. Yeah. This is an NG2. Yeah. So, so very good. I, I would say like in the beginning, it's looked like a double trachea, right? So. Well, in the beginning, right. But in the beginning, this patient didn't have a tube. Yeah. Right, so so this is a patient that's that like I mean clinically you're you're correlating this right in the absence of knowing that yes you would ag I would agree that probably this that's would be NG misleading probably. that's an NG tube for sure because you now have a patient that's actually getting intubated at the time of right so so if you look beforehand and you see that clearly you can be a little bit more comfortable in knowing that that's an NG tube because you're looking at the patient they have an NG tube in place and you've got a tube in your hand you know. It's just, it's just kind of, uh, but yeah, that's that's something just to be kind of not misled by, um, and of course, if you're doing this, identifying that NG tube first is going to be helpful because then you're going to know, okay, am I introducing another tube into that area, or is it, uh, or is it a new thing that's going in place and that's always been there? All right, good call, Peso. Back to our case. So this is your patient uh, that EMS brought in. Someone is just. Yeah, there's compressions going on. These are these are real patients. So are you happy with the tube position? Yes, so the issue is not with the tube. So we'll move on to the next thing, right? The very rapid assessment. The tube is in the right place. They're not esophageally intubated. Um, that obviously doesn't mean that they're sorted out. It just means that you've answered that question. Now, what if this was the patient? What do you do here? All right, you're going to do this. Watch. Boom. Oh, no. Look at that. You just took an esophageal tube out. Yeah. And now you have an esophagus behind it. That looks so, so I love this, this clip because it kind of gives you the, the obvious demonstration between the two things, right? So you've got a patient that has a tube in, and now he doesn't have a tube in. So, um, I mean, it's as simple as that. It's a, this is probably one of the more simple things, thank God, right? Because it's airway. Um, you wouldn't want to really have a complicated ultrasound in the, in the setting of airway, but this is one that uh, is potentially very, very helpful because think of all those times where someone has come in with EMS, you futz around, do I hear air entry, do I not hear air entry, oh, I think I do, oh, I think there might be chest rise. It can be very, very confusing and, and deleterious to the patient's well-being to be confused in that setting. And historically, what we would do is usually just pull the tube because we wouldn't want to confuse things any further. And I would say, you know, this is better because you never know, maybe the tube is in the right place and you're just dealing with another issue and that now you're going to be sort of managing the airway for, you know, five, ten minutes, something like that, when really you already had a tube in the right place. So um, a nice little trick to do to kind of quickly tell you I'm comfortable with the tube being in place. Now this doesn't mean that the tube is optimally placed, which we'll kind of get to in the next thing.